Hello, boys and ghouls. Welcome to episode 74 of Dads from the Crypt. My name is Jason. Tonight, I'm joined by Jody. Hello. And Mondo. Fuck the Seahawks. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's football playoff season, so we're um, all kinds of randy over here. Uh, good weekend of games, though. Really close. We have some good uh, comebacks. Good times. Yeah, I just love that people were like, is anybody playing defense this this, this this weekend, I'm like, did you fucking watch what happened the second half of that Niners Seahawks game? <sighs> the, kid, the other team decided to not play defense. They just kept they flipped the coin. No, that's not what happened. What happened is is uh, this motherfucker tackles Debo Samuel and tries to intentionally twist his leg after the play. Yeah, and then we got pissed off, and Debo Samuel's give me the fucking ball, and then scored a 70 yard touchdown on the next. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a diehard 49ers fan. So I was a little kid. I don't know if we're gonna win the Super Bowl. Um, I said it before and I refuse to let sports make me angry, except for I get like two hours. I get two hours. I'm allowed to be angry and salty. And uh, I know you guys are laughing as flashback when I just trash Canada for 30 minutes. Uh, throw back to our, uh, our, our our origin story episode. But uh, I, I'd be, it'd be cool to see a, a Super Bowl in my adult life. But if I don't, eh, that's life. Ain't that big of a deal. Like life goes on no matter what happens with these games. Don't I have a friend that he always talks about he puts holes in his fucking drywall when his team is oh, he's, he's a diehard Lakers fan from a, a diehard Lakers fan and I'm like dude like that's unhealthy <laughs> you should go talk to somebody <laughs> about that <laughs> when you said you want to see a Super Bowl you mean like the Niners go to the Super Bowl or you want to be there personally oh the Niners win Niners win the Super Bowl I know I'm never actually going to physically go to a Super Bowl unless someone gives me tickets because holy shit yeah. like is it expensive yeah. to go to a Super Bowl um, I'm like uh, it's in Phoenix this year it's not far it wasn't far last year in Los Angeles. Either. Yeah, <laughs> or Vegas. I'm sure they'll have it there soon. I'm sure they'll have it here in Vegas too. In Vegas, I might actually have a chance of going. We'll see, but I, I still doubt it. Like, um, but no, I've seen my team play. You know, uh, lose a Super Bowl a few years back to the mm-hmm. Chiefs and whatever. That was cool. Like, I, I had people texting me like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, yeah, "Why wouldn't I be?" <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I'm at, I'm at home, buzzed as shit on my couch. I've already started watching Jason and Liz for the eight thousandth time. Like, life is okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I haven't watched any sports this weekend, but I have watched uh, the first two Friday the 13th with my older kids. So, how, been... do they, how do they feel about those first two? Oh, they like them. Yeah, nice. they're good stuff. Uh, I, I'm I'm finally at the point that I'm navigating those tricky waters, though, because the first time I watched them with some of my kids, I watched them on like AMC, mm. or the edited for TV version. Let's move. Now I'm like, all right, uh, <laughs> we're watching the real version now. And, uh, you know, special effects, whatever, like they're, I, I don't care, but there's a lot of movies in those first yeah. episodes. Yeah. Uh, the second movie's got like a full long, full frontal nude scenes. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, and so and I don't remember cause I haven't seen the first two in such a long time, mm-hmm. but some of those 80 mo- 80s movies really don't navigate consent very well. No. And, and, and I think that's something, maybe the most, most important conversation to have. Oh, about yeah. no, was like, we this is not that. how you. This is not how you treat a, a female, or this is you, you don't take this shit from her. You don't take this yeah. Shit when from. when in the first movie, a character is introduced by her butt uh, being shown on the screen, and then a guy hits it with a slingshot, and then he turns around and just kind of holds it up and is like, "Yeah," and she wink like she smiles. I'm like, "This is not how relationships actually start." In case you're wondering, <laughs> no. I was watching. Um, my my personal favorite is Jason Lives. I was watching that uh, Friday night, mm-hmm. and uh, now of course I'm. Because I'm me, I read the IMDb every time I watch a movie, oh, yeah, a movie yeah. section, and I didn't realize that that's the only one where there's no actual nudity. There is, a, there's a sex scene, but uh-huh. there's no nudity in it. Um, there in oh, and yeah, and Jason. Yeah, lives. there's. Sorry. Yeah, there is none in Jason Lives. Yeah. That's the only one. You see mostly the back of the the, the yeah the, yeah the, like the, literally the back of the of the male in that. Um, I, I think Jason Lives is actually my favorite because it's just fun. Yeah, it's just fun, fun it's, cheesy movie. It's the shortest. It, it doesn't like have too many non sequiturs. Just has. The, the non sequitur is actually really fun because it's got the paintball crew. Okay, so can can I be the for the only time in my life the contrarian here and be yeah. and tell you that Jason Lives is actually my least favorite? Go for it. Tell me why. Uh, because I like when Friday the Thirteenth tries to be scary, not funny. Yes, and the I, funny I, I, just throws me out. Like I like the scary Friday the Thirteenth. I know that's what you're going for, and I completely respect that opinion. Yeah. Like so, I would never knock that opinion. And see, I think for me uh, with Friday the Thirteenth is. And, you know, also, I mean, Hellraiser, a series that I absolutely love. Um, I can say this for this series, too, is that 
like th- those first two Hellraiser films, in my opinion, are like whew, way up here. Yeah, but they're not what I reach for, and I want something just to sit back and relax sure. to. Like uh, they're they're not feel good movies. I feel that like, Jason Lives is a feel good movie to me. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I think I've watched it just so many times, and Jason Ten the same thing. I've watched it so many times that there's ingrained in my brain. Mm-hmm. But I do think uh, Jason Lives does have the best um uh, the best design for Jason. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when I when I say least favorite, I'm not saying I don't like it. Like, I yes. like every movie in this franchise. It's <laughs> just the one I, if I have to rank them, that's not going at the top. It's going near the bottom. Just because I like, like, part two actually is my favorite because I think Baghead Jason is actually scarier than Mask Jason. I'm with you on that. I'm that 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 bag with just the yeah, one eye hole freaky. is is yeah is not okay. <laughs> I think. Well, the other thing though that I love about Jason Lives. Is that's per- I think it's the only one where there's an actual functioning camp. Yeah, I wish there was more of that. Like kids. And to me, as someone, and that's why I love about camp, horror camp, us summer camp horror movies like Sleepaway mm-hmm. Camp, yeah. is because I was a camper or and I was a counselor. So like the experience of mixing the horror and actually a camp setting, yeah, and, yeah. and having camp going on, that is like much more interesting. Jason lives too, right? I know. Yeah, and yeah. I think that was a. Uh... It was actually one of the kind of scary things because he gets mm-hmm. he's just pissed and he bursts the door and you're thinking oh shit like <laughs> he's about to murk all these fucking children like yeah, he's about to yeah. go uh, Anakin on all these little kids right and then uh, and then Tommy Jarvis it, uh, basically gets him to come yeah uh, yeah to, to come yeah. to come fight him because at the end of the day like he's a simple minded you know creature and his goal was to still like at the end of the day like he'd rather fucking kill Tommy Jarvis than kill these kids. Um, and then I watched uh, part seven for the first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. And wh- what's funny is like for the action figure, it's my favorite design for Jason. But in the movie, it's not because I think all the the makeup on him and the hands almost look too car. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that figure. I have him, Jason. I have him I love holding the, uh, the saw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's actually my favorite creature design for figures. I think it's not my, one of my least favorite for actual Jason because I think that they, with all the prosthetics they put in his hands, it looks almost mm-hmm. rubber monster, rubber cartoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. I think in, in Jason Lives, I hit that perfect thing of, yeah, he's now a zombie, but he's still not that decrepit yet. And But it's still cool they still make him more decrepit in 7 because he's been underwater now for years and it makes the, sense. The, the one thing I don't like is about his design in Jason Lives is he's got like a utility belt. And that's <laughs> yeah, I never understood that. Before. He has like... He's yeah, he's like a, he's, he's, about, he's got like pockets and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like he's like well, Batman. <laughs> I'm just thinking of Jason like organizing all this crap. Like he's okay, got like so sharp... I got all my blades and uh, also a uh, ruler so that I can check and make sure when I'm hanging people that I get it all right. No, he's know? got um shark repellent. Yeah, his utility belt. <laughs> I, I want to see the the between the lines version of Jason, because it's always funny when you see him kill someone, but then he put the head in a place where he knew someone's gonna find it. Like oh, I yeah. want to see him like putting the head in the cabinet, standing back, and going. No, no. Yeah, I'll put. I've wanted shelf. that in slasher movies forever. I, the the like setting the scene. Like after he kills everybody, he's like, okay, one left. I need this guy to fall from the sky. I need this one to kind of like be behind the door. There's some cleverness well, there, it, and well, that's the brilliance of uh, behind the mask, the rise of Leslie yes. Vernon. Because yeah, they, I was talking they, about they, that. They address when he's sawing the tools. He goes, "I want the tool to break when they swing." It. So he's sawing the tools. Yeah, like, that's brilliant. That's what all I've always thought in a horror movie, the slasher. Um, how would that person have this great scene? And that explained it and it made it so awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's. I know it's not horror news time, and I don't have this pulled up anywhere. But I did see the other mm-hmm. day that like Behind the Mask Two is fully in production. Yes. No, yeah. I, I, what I read was that the it was in production a couple of years ago, but it shut down, and then they're What's working on a um, short movie, short film, mm, kind of know, drum I up interest. Wrong. I need to, I need to go research this now. Because I'm, at, yeah, because I was filmed in Oregon, especially when I was living there, so I knew right, a lot right. of the places where, where they filmed some of the um, outdoor I, stuff. See, this is me spreading internet rumors. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> I'll, I'll know by next time. Jody's in-depth sources have stated that uh, <laughs> go to his google search the deep a, state has told him there's a uh, so, so wrestling is a funny place where there's a some some very esteemed journalists who know their shit but they'll say on a they do radio they do a podcast and they'll say whatever you do don't report this as fact this is just something mm-hmm. i'm speculating on that i'd say in a perfect world this is what happened and the next day there's 10 websites that brian alvarez said this this is like no he didn't he said his exact words were do not report this as fact this is just speculation yeah 
Yeah, d- take but, everything I say with the news segment as that. <laughs> just go ahead, but a blanket disclaimer as I'm reading things on the internet, just like everyone else. So, all right, but uh, let's get into our episode for the night, which we are we are excited to talk about. We're not like beating around the bush trying to um, stall for time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we're talking about Cabin of Curiosities, episode six, Dreams in the Witch House. Jody, give me a plot synopsis. All right, so I had to actually pull up a plot synopsis that somebody else wrote on this one because there's a lot that happens in this episode. Like, it's not hard to follow, but I could not remember every single thing as I was uh, trying to think back on it. All right, so we open on uh, two children, Walter and Epperly, his sister. And Epperly is dying, and Walter says that he, you know, promises that he will take care of her forever. And then she dies uh, right after that. And uh, her ghost appears behind him and gets pulled off into the woods by her feet. And he sees like this vortex open up and pull her into it. And the woods close back around her. And so that affects everything else from that point on. Kind of, yeah, I mean, it would, right? Like if you saw that happen, uh, I don't think you just get to go back to school the next day and pretend nothing crazy happened. Were there a bunch of people on January 6th that went to the Capitol in Washington, D.C. and thought they were just going to go back to work on Monday and nothing right. was, go, go back to work in a few days and nothing bad is going to happen. So once you see the vortex open and drag your sister to some nether realm, I, I, I think uh, that does affect the rest of your life. And it does for him. Uh, in his adult age, uh, he becomes uh, a member of the Spiritualist Society that's trying to find proof of the supernatural. He's got his friend there, Frank, and uh, they're investigating all this stuff and just not having any luck. Uh, every time they find a medium or someone who says they can communicate with the other side, they end up being a fake. And so uh, he, ba- Frank basically decides he's done with the Spiritualist Society. He wants a real job. And uh, Walter wants to keep going, but he's working his side job as a bartender. And while he's there, he overhears some Native Americans talking. Um, Oh, this all takes place in Boston, by the way. That's probably important. Um, But he hears some... Boston uh, or Arkham? Somewhere. Boston, Arkham. No, no. Well, (laughs) Arkham Arkham is the... the, uh, Arkham, yeah. Never mind. But, uh, so... um, where was I? I said some Native American guys are talking something about a, a like a hole appears in the woods and a vortex. And he's like, wait, woods vortex. That's my thing. And so they take him to a place where he drinks this drug that they're just calling liquid gold. And it puts him to sleep and then it opens up the ability for him to cross into this realm. And he does it once and he actually sees his sister and talks with her. But then he gets pulled back by some vines and out of that world does it again and actually gets to have a conversation with her. Turns out she looks exactly the same as she did when she died. Same clothes, same age, all that. And um, he, um, or she tells him the reason why she's in this kind of like between realm is because she was afraid when she died. She wasn't ready to die. And so she's in this between place. Um, Gets pulled back out again. Meanwhile, there's this lady who lives in this creepy house that used to belong to a witch who was burned back in the the witch trials, I guess. Uh, she This witch was able to like cross dimensions and all this stuff is what they've been told. And so he realizes that that is a place that actually has a way to get there without the drug. He gets fired from the spiritualist society because he does drugs. And so now he's down to just trying this. So he goes there. It's a dirty place. There's plants growing up inside of it. There's a big wet stain on the ceiling that's dripping. And he goes to sleep there. And this is when it gets real weird. Um, would you ever have, would you rather, rather the wet spot be on the mattress or on the ceiling? Like, I think all is bad. So many but the mattress, I think, would actually be worse because you actually have to touch that. The ceiling is just there. Yeah. Put a towel down or something. I mean, you can move a mattress. <laughs> Yeah, sure. You know, it's a really like under the wet spot on the ceiling. <laughs> you, like, what's that mean? Though? You could like sleep on the floor. Like, you don't, or you have options in any, situ- any situation, but sure, sure. All right. That's like you have a, dr- a drop cloth and then a nice stand. So, anyway, in this place for painting, there is a rat with a human face named Jenkins Brown. 
I don't. The, where do we get that name? Does it actually say that anywhere? Or is it just yeah, something that, I see on IMDb? Okay. No, that's that's an. I, I, we they, he calls himself Jenkins in this, but okay. that's one, that's one hundred percent his name in the book. Okay. Or in in the short story. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it later. But this whole thing was based on an H.P. Lovecraft story, loosely based on loosely based I, I, on. I did uh, air quotation marks for you, yeah. non YouTube watchers. So we've got uh, the rat with the human face, and then the witch. Like while he is, or while Walter is sleeping, like a portal opens, and this witch comes out, and she talks with Jenkins, who is kind of her familiar, I guess. And he finds, or Walter finds out through this whole interaction that the key to bringing his sister back is that they are twins and they have a bond that's stronger than death. And so uh, inspired by all this, he gets another dose of that liquid gold, uses it in the witch house, goes and sees his sister and actually manages to pull her out. But at the same time, he's being pursued by this witch. Uh, Kaziah and Jenkins are both after him and they cross over as well, kind of. And at this point, there's a lot going on in the story. There's a lady who is a painter who uh, has access to this realm, and she lives in the witch house, too. And we, she, they go to see her, and she says that if uh, the sister is to live, he has to die. And she has these paintings that tell a prophecy that he'll die before sun's up. They go to a church to protect themselves. It does not work. Uh, because the witch blows up the windows and kills the priest lady uh, none it didn't make sense, it didn't make sense let's be it, honest it just didn't make sense i think it was her both sister in status in relation to the other woman sure anyway they she dies window blows up and then the witch sucks walter out of the door through some kind of magic power and takes him back home uh to the witch house again and uh, they're wanting to kill him, but then uh, Epperly runs through a wall and ends up there and kills the witch and she dies. As they're recuperating, they go up in the attic and they uh, Walter's kind of asleep on the bed and Frank and uh, the painter lady go up into the attic. They find the witch's bones and Jenkins' bones but then Jenkins burrows his way into Walter's body and pops out and kills him. And then after they leave, uh, Jenkins goes back into him and possesses his body and uh, walks away as Walter. Now, like I said, a lot of plot in this hour. I normally try to write these things out myself so that I have more flow than what I'm doing right now. But if I wrote down everything that happened here, it would take me three hours to watch the episode for all the pausing. No. So, uh, Maybe I, I missed it, but what, things. do we find out what happens to the sister? Does that get resolved? She um, goes back, or like she goes to another afterlife realm because she's peace right, at peace okay. now and kind of she says basically like, like a little whirlwindy yeah. kind of okay. thing. I she's not, like I'm free now or I'm safe yeah. now or something of that. Yeah, she's, okay, so she's at least not he in that same forest place she was before. She's wherever else. So at least he accomplished that. That's good. Yeah, yeah. He he freed his sister before becoming a a rat mech. <laughs> all right mondo star us off what'd you think so this was by far have, has been my least favorite episode of the series really this episode had a lot of issues a um again i, I think I, I said before the episode started i haven't read this short story in probably 20 years but it was nothing like what they portrayed here uh, the fact that the whole thing with the sister was not an angle in the in in the lovecraft uh story i thought the CGI used with uh, first of all, like the witch's design, the idea behind, it, I thought was actually really good, but mm -hmm. the execution was piss poor in my opinion. Mm. Uh, the way she moved almost looked comical, like how she's like almost like skipping, like she's chasing him. Mm. I felt I felt it was like one of those cartoons with the cat running from Pepe Le Pew uh, when she's yeah. chasing him through the through the nether realm or whatever. Not not to interrupt too much, but since we're on it, I love the way she looked from a distance. Yes, yes. And then when you saw like the details of like her like hands that. They look plasticky. Yeah. Almost like I guess they're okay. maybe supposed to be wood because she's like a, a tree lady now in this forest place. But I don't know. I like the way she looked from a distance, though. Like, it was cool. I, and I think whenever you introduce something like uh, Jenkins here, which was, you know, obviously a character in the, in the, in the, in the short story, and but he was almost played for last in this mm -hmm. until the end where he shows his sinister side. 
but in in the short story, it's definitely like a malicious character. It's a malicious Ooh. character who you know from the the, the get go, the going, the, the beginning, who's trying to um, basically make this guy let his guard down and befriend him so he can get what he wants in the very end. Mm-hmm. I, I did the changes they did. I thought real were really bad. So in in the in the short story, he's basically like a mathematician that hears about this this witch house which has crazy geometry which defies geometric law which was a common thing with lovecraft and that and, and that that's what he was he was seeking after like how does this mathematically none of this works and in a lot of lovecraft adaptations it's always geometry that brings forth mm-hmm. uh your your entry into the other realm so i, I really thought that basically they did was take a great short story and butcher the fuck out of it have some pretty bad special effects like i'll be honest like i kind of like the design of the church but then as she's like floating around the windows and attacking the windows, all I'm thinking of is Freddy's dead with Freddy on his broomstick pretending to be the, uh, the witch, uh, witch. Don't 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 besmirk that that masterpiece. Oh no, I movie. love that scene. I absolutely love that scene, but it works in Freddy's dead. It doesn't, uh, yeah. it doesn't work here. There's I, also I, that there was that one shot of the glass breaking it looked really, really like yes, and like they the like, look like they didn't finish the animation. Looking through the window, yeah. and yeah. I was like, fuck this. And looked, I, I yeah. think but I, what, I, what I do want to say is as much as I'm bashing, well, I'm gonna bash a little bit more. Um, I don't think the direction was good. I don't think that I think some of the set pieces were good, but I, I think that's about it. I think the acting was was solid. Like you had great actors here. Um, uh, the guy that plays the rat, uh, I forgot. Uh, you DJ, probably, Qualls. I, I, DJ Qualls. It's DJ Qualls from uh, I love. Yes. Road, Trip Road Trip and stuff and like that. So many different things, and he's I, I love him. He's such a recognizable actor. And uh, if you ever hear, I've heard a couple of interviews with him. He sounds like a great guy, like a fun mm-hmm. guy you'd want to hang out and have a beer. I thought he was great in it. I thought. Uh, the Harry Potter kid is great in it. I thought all the acting was very, very solid. I don't remember in the original them seeking out Native Americans, which is kind of weird. And maybe they did. Maybe I, I missed that part in there, but it's been so long. And I actually did like the idea of sleep paralysis with, mm-hmm. you know, if any of you guys have experienced sleep paralysis, that's really how it is. You can't move and you see fucking crazy shit. And everyone, a lot of people have had uh, the, the shared image of the old hag. And I kind of really dig how they brought that into the into the episodes. So I did like that. But overall, like if you're going to do Lovecraft, I don't need you to do a, a, a paint by the nun- numbers Lovecraft adaptation. But I want that fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. I, I want that cosmic horror. And what I got here was more of a uh, like a, a an old like fairy tale. I, I didn't get the cosmic horror I wanted. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say that so far, I think this is a huge miss for the series. Interesting. Jody. So I'm not going to go as far to say like it was bad. Like I didn't like I enjoyed the time watching this episode, but it's nowhere on par with the other episodes that I've seen so far. Um, I did enjoy I enjoyed it on like a almost like fantasy adventure level that I mean, it reminded me a lot of like movies that I would have watched as a kid, like the guys trying to save his sister. There's a witch. And maybe that's the fairy tale thing you're going with, uh, Mondo. Well, but well, it, I, I do honestly think I would have liked it a lot more had I not been a fan of the source material. And yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I don't know the source material as well. My only exposure to the Dreams of the Witch House story is from the Masters of Horror series uh, that came out. Yes. What was that, like early 2000s? 2005 or six, somewhere around there. Yeah, and of course, that version was directed by Stuart Gordon because he's the Lovecraft guy. And it still had the uh, human-faced rat and everything. But I remember really liking that. It was a good story. I feel like maybe there was just too much going on in here. Like, that's why I said eventually I had to just pull up a uh, kind of plot synopsis from somewhere else. Because there was so much happening here with the siblings and the bringing the sibling back from the dead and trying the drugs. And, like, we didn't even get to the actual Dreams in the Witch House story until, like, halfway through. Everything else was prologue leading to that. And then it felt rushed after that, yes. that uh, that part of the story just kind of, why are we at the witch house? Why is this all going on? It, if you didn't know anything prior to this, you might not be able to keep up with what's happening in this. And I, I even sitting here knowing the original story, it was a lot to keep up with. Yeah. Um, I a lot of characters, a lot of stuff happening yeah. constantly. And I think even if they'd gone with the idea of like inspired by dreams in the witch house, not called sure. it dreams in the witch house, I think I'd be way more on board. But whenever you name anything off the iconic source material, mm-hmm. I think you have to, I think you have to pay that some kind of homage, uh, some kind of homage. And they didn't really do that here in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a loose adaptation. It's like, uh, I, I've said for a long time that the 
Child's Play remake that they did was a decent movie. I wish it hadn't been called Child's Play and I wish Chucky yeah. didn't look like Chucky. Same with the Black Christmas remake that came out that same year. Like if it hadn't been called Black Christmas and it was just like, you know, sorority Christmas murders or something terrible, like it would have been a fine movie. Like, but I don't like comparing it to that original because right. I held the original in such high regard. And, and even but with those movies, though, I feel like some of the reason this may sound bad, those movies got made is because they use the name of the oh, yeah. original. Yeah, no, right. I understand the marketing And I get there. that. But I do, but I also think that with Guillermo del Toro behind the helm of a series, if you have a good idea and you told him, hey, this is loosely based on this Lovecraft story that I like, but mm. took a lot of liberties with it, I want to call it something different. He would have been like, yeah, that's that's totally fine. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, I, I did enjoy this episode, but it didn't have that like, wow, that I've had with most of the other ones. It was it was it was fine. All right. I'm going to be the contrarian here. I love this episode. Okay. Uh, this might be my second favorite uh, up against Autopsy. Ooh, you would love this episode, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I know. I think you just like um, moist structures. No, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't familiar with Dreams of the Witch House property at all. Um, I did read the Wikipedia afterwards so I could see where the differences are and how that might be disappointing if you're looking for a more straightforward adaptation. But um, I, from an from an emotional perspective, I liked that they had the brother sister um, narrative. It, it drove, it made me care. So, when, like in the graveyard rats, I didn't really care about that guy. I mean, I enjoyed watching him being terrorized, but there wasn't anything story wise or emotionally that like, made me interested in him. Where this one, yeah, obviously it's contrived. You know, that's what they wrote it to be because they're they're manipulating you. Yeah, but that's what stories do. Yeah. Um, and I thought Rupert Grintz, uh, the, the guy from Harry Potter, did a wonderful performance. I thought he was really yes. good in this. Oh, yeah. Um, and he's also, he's, I didn't realize this, he's going to be in Knock at the Cabin. So that's actually oh, really nice. exciting. Yeah. He's one of the guys that comes to the cabin. I love uh, that book. So I'm so excited for that movie. Yeah. So I I'm, thought I'm excited and nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of enjoy a desperate man with like some sort of like heartbreak or something that's driving him. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of made me feel a little bit like Mulder in a way. From the X Files, like searching for a sister, oh. give me that kind of vibe. Um, and I like the friend, uh, Ismael Cruz Gordova. He was just kind of a good, like, dependable guy. Um, he was just kind of there for him, but you know, to a point. Um, he was in Man the Mandalorian in the Ring Rings of Power. Um, yeah, the effects weren't great. Actually, I did, I loved the witch, even when they got close up. I thought some of the details on, yeah, it was definitely rubbery, but uh, I thought I some of the details in the costume, but I liked how, like, her hair was wood and there was like flames yeah. kind of trickling yes. out. And that, that part I like. I think the idea behind the, the, the concept behind the design was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just would have liked a better execution. I, I think right. the face was probably the best, like the head and the face. Yeah. With and all the that, eyes. that was the best part. Like the body maybe is where it felt rubbery to me. Yeah. No, I can, I can, I totally agree. I can see that. Yeah. The, the effects for the mouse, not good. It didn't do a very good job of like introducing that character. Though I do, I do actually really like DJ Qualls. Um, you know, Roadhouse. He was in Cherry Falls. Mm -hmm. He was in Hustle yeah. and Flow. And actually, he was also recently in the Creep Show uh, TV. Yeah, Creep Show TV series. He's so, a he's a um, he's a funny guy. I remember reading an interview with him when they asked him because I guess he was like addicted to TV as a kid. He mm -hmm. because he's from like Alabama or Georgia. Oh no, like he he's from Manchester, Tennessee. So Tennessee. I need to know Jody if you were um, that is just down the road. Yeah. Wait, he, he he made a joke one time in an interview saying that watching so much TV is why he doesn't have a southern accent because he was he was watching yeah. all all kinds of TV from around the world and never picked up that accent. Um, let's see, and then the uh, other woman that helps them out, Tanika Davis. Um, she has a fun pe pedigree. She's uh, Wrong Turn Four, Saw Four, and Degrassi Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> She's really good in this. I, yeah. I, thought, I thought I thought the acting choices were just fantastic. Yeah, I, thought, no, I, yeah, I all actually. The I really liked the acting. I thought the directing was good. Uh, cast directed by Catherine Hardwick, who did 13, the Red Riding Hood movie, tw the first Twilight, which say what you about Twilight, but that was it was a good setup for a series. And then, you know, yeah, I, 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 thought thought the I probably shouldn't have shit on the directing. The directing wasn't bad. I thought that this, yeah. the script and the oh, story. You guys good. are, are, you know, perfectly happy to um not love this one as much as i did but um yeah, but, yeah but, some but, of the narrative I was on the direct i think i shit on the directing i probably shouldn't have because the yeah. directing wasn't bad the directing wasn't I, bad. yeah I, I even like the child actors in this i thought yeah. they, both yeah. uh, the me twins too. did a good job me too like they actually that's a tricky they, thing 
You know? and, and for much as I hated it, it's the way they changed the episode, the, the story. Like the beginning, you're right, Jay. I thought the beginning was actually very, very well done. Mm-hmm. With, with the girl being dragged into the forest and just yeah. like her yeah. reaction to being dead and the kid's reaction of like legit fear, I thought was very, very, very well done. I, um, I, 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 also, I think most of my complaints just came from places where it felt a little sloppy, like things mm-hmm. weren't explained very well, like like the human faced rat. He's just yeah. there and no one has any idea why there's a human faced rat. He's running around, he's making jokes. And then like, I, I never understood why he was there. And, and he's and, a main part of this episode. No, no, I'll totally agree that there was definitely some narrative. There's just some places that it could have either yeah. used a little more fleshing out or they could have just trimmed out some stuff so they didn't have to push. Well, I, I, I don't, I, I see, I think sometimes in, in horror, that you have like this again, this this human face rat that should be terrifying. That shouldn't be mm-hmm. used as a piece of humor or a slapstick. It was more and confusing like for he's, me. He, he was more <laughs> Templeton. He was more Templeton from Charles Webb. Yeah, than he was yeah. like a uh, like I want him to go be eating trash and living a great life. <laughs> so. I was. I didn't know if I loved was the so was the liquid gold thing in the short story I, or the original story. I don't remember, but if I'm not mistaken, I think is I don't even remember if it was in the short story. To be honest with you, again, no. I think it was just been, dreams. I think it was just yeah. In the short I think it was story, dreams. Slept so, and all this stuff. But, but it seemed like they're trying to make it out to be peyote or some. Or, you know, I thought like, it was like uh, yeah, DMT. <laughs> uh, what? What? I, th- I thought it was going to be DMT kind of oh, thing. DMT. Okay. He took yeah. it and immediately he's just like, ah. I, I thought you said DDP. I'm like Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> 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 Now, if he just shown up and started just laying out people with diamond cutters, I'd be into this episode. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, I knew nothing about the story, so I was kind of curious where they were going with this guy just kind of tripping balls and opium dems. I, something about, I love a good opium dem story, you know? Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting because, um, like, but I do think like the sleep paralysis scene I thought was actually yeah. insanely mm-hmm. well done. And and one like little thing they did that which I really liked is they had the blood hit his eye, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. then it, it wasn't there. It was there, then it wasn't there because that's a common thing with, with sleep paralysis is just that hallucination. So I thought that was actually really, really, really well done. And, and I kind of like the idea of changing the story a little bit to add in like the hallucinogens, but it, it does take away though, at the end of the day from the whole Lovecraftian theme of it, which is always the fear of the unknown and how these angles and different things bring different, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. different ideas to our world. And it looked like they were, were kind of going for that with the set, like they kind of had some weird angles and then it's almost like they just gave up. <laughs> yeah, I would have been okay if they dropped that and made it more about the the, the witch house itself. But yeah, I'd be I, okay too. But, but I don't think they were they ever like fully yeah. decided on where they were going to go with that. And they kind of right. like, like like Jody mentioned, there's so many different threads just going yeah. on that's hard to kind of keep track of. You know, they, I, I I agree with all of those, but I think because they nailed the acting and they nailed an emotional anchor for the character, that's what kept me going through the whole thing. Oh, I respect that. Totally. You know, honest, honestly, even though it, as we're talking about this, I'm thinking through it. Even though it was part of the original story, I think if they had just gotten rid of the human faced rat, I would have liked this a lot better. Like, I know yeah. that's part of the story and I liked yes. it from the uh, adaptation uh, from Masters of Horror. But in this, it just felt so weird and out of place that it kind of threw the whole thing for me. I, I was, I was with then. it up until that point. I have to go back now and watch the Master of Horror one because I think what they did differently is they never really showed you the scene of the rat really running around so much. Yeah. Like when it was running around, is like again a far shot. But yeah. then like when when he was talking to the guy in his chest, they'd always make sure it was a nice tight zoom on the face. Yeah. So you couldn't really so that it didn't really break down that CGI. Yeah. It was again. I didn't the, know the rat gonna... guy was just never scary. He felt silly to me in this version yes. of it, and it, I think that's what killed it for me. Except that. not except again, not knowing what was going to happen, having like almost a chestburster scene happen. I was like, whoa, what is happening? Because I yeah. did not. I didn't know what the hell was about to happen. So when he started like convulsing at the chest. I was like, wait, well, what? Then the, like even that last scene where he overtakes uh, his human host. Right. And he kind of like puts on a tie and makes some quirk like, oh, I'm going to go have a randy night in the town. It's like, dude, like you're like, like here's this very kind of serious thing where this guy is now his soul. Where the fuck is his soul taken by this witch? But we're gonna play the last scene for last. Yeah, and that's that's it, yeah. Kinda, it took me out of it. Yeah, and and on before he got to the witch house, I was actually pretty on board with everything going on. Like I, I like the sister stuff. I like the hunt for trying to find her. I like, I even like the drug stuff. Like that was fine. But once we got to the witch house and things got crazy, and there was the rat man, like it, <laughs> it lost me a little bit. I did like the witch. I think I you could have kept the witch and just lost the rat, and I would have been fine. No, I want to pitch my idea, which is Ratma. Dream Ratma. 
no, no, dream <laughs> warriors in the witch house. The final <laughs> scene is Kincaid having a fist fight with the witch. <laughs> oh my shout god! Kin- it all shout comes. Out to- oh. Shout out to Kincaid, who should have been the Tommy Jarvis of the Nightmare series. Just saying. Yeah. Shout out to Ken Soaks. <laughs> um. Also, yeah, he's a great. He's actually a really cool dude. He's done yeah. a lot of fun mm-hmm. stuff. So. Um. Crap. What was I going to say? But yeah. Oh, also, I do. It was kind of funny because I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan in the world, but you know, my wife and my kids were like, like those movies and everything. And I've, I've read the books once just because, you know, if you grew up in the two thousands, well, like, uh, I watched all the I movies think, with my kids, but I, I haven't ever read them. I've never read them, never seen them. But I think we were all kind of of that age. Whereas if you didn't, like, we're all just like right over that cusp mm-hmm. of being like when that came out, that's still young adult fiction. I think we were all probably 17, 18 when those books came out. Yeah, right. Um, you, well, you, guys, watching... you guys are older than me. So well, I was, I was yeah. <laughs> so like, I watched the movies just to keep up. Yeah. But yeah. there is a major thread where Rupert Grint's character does have a rodent as a pet. Oh, which, yeah. we later, which we later found out spoilers is actually a person oh wow that's in funny. disguise mm-hmm. so it was and, and, and you know I'd, I'd, expect, I'd expect jk rowling you know to to take some 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 information some stuff from hp lovecraft because i think like <laughs> politically they're probably on the same spectrum oh boy <laughs> uh, did you ever hear <laughs> did you ever hear oh, okay. the story about jk rowling how she named her never mind okay. how she uh Never mind. She... <laughs> okay. So the Ravens lost. I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> she pretty Never much more. named her cat after Lovecraft's cat. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut that out because, but I don't know how racist she is, but she seems, she, I don't think she's racist. I think she's just an idiot, to be honest with you. Yeah. I think she's higher on supply. Piece of shit. Terrible <laughs> human being. But I don't think she's racist. I think she's also. <laughs> so, sp- speak- <laughs> speaking of which, I, I just shout out to the funniest thing I've read on Twitter in a few days. So someone made a post about how uh, Hitler was a uh, was uh, no hold on a sec I'm getting there. Uh, Hitler was basically a pedophile because uh, Ava Braun was like 17 when he married her. Mm-hmm. I think his previous marriage before that she's like 16. And uh, someone goes, "Oh, good, we can finally cancel Hitler." <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was like the, just the funniest thing. <laughs> finally, that was <laughs> finally, the line. Finally, we can cancel Hitler. <laughs> All right. And this was we done by somebody any... who obviously knows a yeah. terrible person. Like there was it wasn't like the person wasn't was was definitely yeah. speaking in jest. I got it. <laughs> All right. Do we have any uh, closing thoughts on this episode? I think I got it all out. I feel pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Just uh, get rid of the rat next time. Okay. Or just 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 don't call it dreams in the witch house next time. Just call it something that... inspired by. Yes, inspired not based by. on oh, actual cool. events. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. That, that's it. like what Stuart Gordon would have done if he had this script is he'd have done it and called it inspired by. And yeah, I'm not going to say we've done it better. I'm not like, again, he said direct direction actually was really, really good. Yeah. Um, so, all things considered. Dreams in the rent controlled witch house. <laughs> yeah. Call it, call it a afterlife. I don't know. All right. Okay. What do we give this episode? What's our rating? Jody. Okay. All right. You got to call a man. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't know who's supposed to go here. You already Uh, said we're not good at doing this out direction, Jason. All right. I'm going to go middle of the road with it because I did enjoy most of it up until uh, things just kind of fell off the rails for me. So I'm going to give this a three. Okay. Mondo. Um, It still gets a two for me, which I don't mean is horrible. I do think there's a lot of stuff here that some people are going to like. It just wasn't for me. All right. I'm going with the four. It's, 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 it's funny how much Jason just shits on Tales from the Crypt, but give him a bad Lovecraft adaptation. He's all fucking balls deep in it. <laughs> That's me. I'm all balls deep. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mondo, give us our song of the day. All righty. So I saved this for this episode. But there's a band that came out in 2007 by the name of Brown Jenkins. Ooh. <laughs> Much like it is it a one man project by and the guy went on. He's from Massachusetts, a big Lovecraft fan, went on to do a band called the Ash Eaters. No, not the Ass Eaters, sorry. The Ash Eaters. <laughs> what if he did the Ass Eaters? <laughs> the, the Ass Eaters is more of a punk band name, right? Like, oh my god. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Like, just what people want to do. People can do whatever they want to do in their personal time. Um, but he made a band called the Ash Eaters. But Brown Jenkins, uh, the three records, uh, first one called Dagonite, which was their EP. Then followed up with um, um, Angel Eyes in like 2009 or 2008. 
And then 2009 was his final record he released as uh, as Brown Jenkins, which was a Death Obsession. But the first one, Dagan and I, was my favorite and one man project. But it just sounds like I, I think if you're going to do Lovecraftian inspired music, it should sound creeping and crawling and just you should feel like you're you're working your way through slime. So uh, I'm going to go with the title track off his EP Dagonite. The song is called Dagonite. And I would I tell you guys to listen to this song because it just has that crawling feel. And I think he made some really brilliant music. And one of the few artists that was very Lovecraft inspired that really captured that feeling of what I feel like Lovecraft in audio form should be. Nice. But uh, sadly, like I'm really bummed. I, I realize they haven't done anything in 14 years. So I'm thinking, like, oh, I bought that. I bought that CD when I was working at Barnes and Noble 20 year, years ago. <laughs> Can you explain yeah. to the kids what Barnes and Noble is? <laughs> what a CD is? <laughs> what the bookstore is? <laughs> it's a compact disc. We could burn those. We could make mixtapes on mix, mix CDs. <laughs> What's a mixtape? <laughs> <laughs> What's a tape? <laughs> oh my lord oh my lord well our target audience i think our biggest audience is what like a 35 to 35 to 45 we know they all know what i'm talking about and uh also for all you people don't forget to take your ibuprofen it's right it's about time <laughs> yes it's raining i gotta go take my ibuprofen um, <laughs> have, you, have you guys gotten hit heavy with rains this week we did uh last week it was real it was probably the heaviest most like sustained rain i think i've ever seen it was just we got a lot. a lot of rain the past couple days. Not like what you guys were getting, but for Vegas, a lot of rain. Just because usually yeah. we'll get like 30 minutes of rain. And that's it. We yeah. had pretty much rained all day yesterday. Uh, what's funny is I'll be back in Virginia on Tuesday, and it's warmer there than it's going to be in Las Vegas. It's just <laughs> fucking crazy. But global warming doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. It, it, it snowed here this weekend. I don't know if y'all ever get snow, but it snowed here. Oh, really? We get snow every now and again. And when we do, it's like a crazy event because you'll see people driving straight driving 60 miles an hour down on the freeway with just snow flying up their car because they didn't realize you should wipe that off before you yeah. start driving which which i think should be you know common sense because if you have any obstruction on top of your vehicle you wouldn't fucking drive around with like a like 10 pounds of fucking gravel on top of your car like <laughs> you shouldn't drive around 10 pounds of snow in your car either if it's snowed in Los Angeles, I'm pretty sure Michael Bay would make a movie about it. <laughs> it's just the world ending because it snows. So it's a called... Ro- Roland Emmerich movie. Yeah, it'd be called the Snow in LA. Snowing. It'd be called Snow, and that informer guy would be uh, on the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jody, give us some horror news. All right, I got a bunch since it's been a while since I've actually been here. Uh, oh, wow. First up, uh, appropriate for the shirt that I'm wearing tonight. Uh, Chucky season three has been ordered by sci-fi and I am extremely excited about that. Mondo, have you watched both seasons? Yes. So season two, here's what I'm going to say about season two. Season one, I thought Please, from start to finish on. was... No spoilers. Spoiling. No, no spoilers. spoilers. Okay. I thought season one from start to finish was just amazing. I mm-hmm. thought season two, I started off really slow. Mm-hmm. And um, I wasn't really engrossed about halfway through, and then it just goes off the fucking rails. Oh yeah, it's so awesome! Like I, yeah, with, without I love spoiling both anything, we get into full seat of Chucky territory mm. in half a season two. It goes I'm, nuts, and, uh, and mm, we we know how I feel about Jennifer Tilly. Mm-hmm. Lots of Jennifer Tilly in season two. Well, uh, my, my my wife was like, "Do you have a, a, a she? You know, she knows she knows my my feelings towards Miss Tilly." And then she's like, "Do you just like her though? Like when do you have a crush on her when she was younger or now?" I was just like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of the above. Yes. Uh, she's and and also just to point out, she is fantastic in this. Mm-hmm. Like fantastic playing 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 herself slash whatever. Like it's just very, very well done. Yeah, no, it's great. I, I love both seasons. Well, I, I think I agree with you. It probably took a little while to get going because it was a whole new setup in season two, but in the end, great. Some great, like, and you would think quick. this being a sci fi, like, basic cable kind of show that it would be toned down. It is not toned down, it is very bloody. It is, I, I think, uh, I read somewhere Don Mancini negotiated in his contract that he got six fucks per episode, <laughs> so <laughs> well, it is R rated. Well, they talk about it in that one episode. There's yeah. an episode, remember, where they bring it up, uh, yeah. when they break the fourth wall, but also, um, just a shout out real fast to our friends over at the Horror Script Podcast. Um, I did an episode this this season with him too, but um, he does a great breakdown of all the episodes, and it is yeah. very, very, very fun. Nice. All right, more horror news. 
Uh, a new movie has been announced, The Wrath of Becky, which is a sequel to Becky from a couple years ago. Uh, that was the one that had Lulu Wilson as uh, the what, probably 13, 14 year old Becky in that. And uh, Kevin James as a very large Nazi man with a big <laughs> swastika on the back of his head. <laughs> It's a great movie. Oh, like, if movie. you like to see a 13 year old girl kill a bunch of Nazis, hey, well, it's oh, a good time. Also, oh, he, I, he, he's a great actress. And Kevin James, like, I, I love when that. He was great in it. And you could tell he just was happy to be, to break outside of that mold he was trying yeah. to. Do. And I know, I know it's really a stretch here. I'm about to compare him to, but I'll compare him to Robin Williams. When Robin Williams mm -hmm. got outside that comedy character, mm -hmm. for like Death the Smoochie and One Hour Photo insomnia like i really thought this yeah me too death of smoochie so good <laughs> i thought this is going to be his breakout kind of role into these different i, I, I like to see him do more things once yeah less he, paul blart more becky <laughs> yeah he was a big intimidating dude in that i he was really big. enjoyed that first movie excited for more of it there's been oh. one picture released and she's just like covered in blood so you know it's going to be a good time I want to see a, a prequel with um, him versus uh, Patrick Stewart from uh, The Green Room. Oh, yeah. Good guys <laughs> playing Nazis. Good guys playing Nazis. The Green Room is like one of my favorite movies, and it's so stupid because the dude gets a guy in the arm bar and legit breaks his arm with the, with the arm bar. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, because I, I always have like friends that be like, mm, would that stuff work on me? And I'm like, yeah, it would. But what if I gouge your <laughs> eyes and bit you? I was like, well, if you bit me while I was arm barring you, I would just fucking break your arm. And then I'd bite your hand because <laughs> I can bite too. There, there's All a right. funny Boss Rutten story. But, uh, well, so, so Boss Rutten, do you guys know who Boss Rutten is? Not that bad. No. If you guys don't know who Boss Rutten is, he's like the most char charismatic fighter of all time. And he's a fun guy. Um, The Grand Theft Auto games, he had his own TV station there where he taught uh, how to survive in a street fight. Okay. And he's, he's, a, he's a hilarious guy. Uh, his most famous story is when Brian Erlacher tried to fight him at a charity event. And, and this guy is like one of the baddest motherfuckers ever lived. So he stepped on Brian Erlacher's shoe, uh, Chicago Bears linebacker. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, sorry about that. And Brian Erlacher goes, fuck you. He goes, no, you're right. I'm an asshole. Sorry. I didn't mean to step on his shoe. And he goes, I don't think you're sorry. Do you want to go outside? And Boss Rubin's like, yeah. <laughs> and then people <laughs> came and was like, no. No, you don't want to do this. Um, but he was talking one time. They had these black belts and ninjutsu that showed up to his jiu-jitsu class. And uh, one of them goes, this wouldn't work. He goes, excuse me? None of this would work. He goes, why? Because I'll just gouge your eyes out and break your arm. He goes, well, do you want to try? Sure. He goes, okay. So the person sat between his legs, and he got his, the back, and he got the choke on the thing. He goes, okay, on the count of three, we'll go. And if you try to touch my eyes or bite me, I'm just going to break your neck and kill you. Okay, ready? On three, one, two. I was like, wait. <laughs> What'd you say? He goes, oh, no, no. What's going to happen is on three, if you try to bite me or gouge my eyes, I'm just going to kill you. So let's go on three. And uh, the person didn't want to continue with the exercise. But um, <laughs> the green room, though, fucking awesome movie. And how yeah. did they get Patrick Stewart in that? Uh, <laughs> like, and I mean that in the best way possible, because Patrick Stewart's just the big. He seems like he's the kind of guy. If you gave him a great script, he'd be like, yeah, I'm yeah, doing this. No. Pat Patrick Stewart definitely is one of those guys who's just down to like have fun and enjoy acting. He's had a reoccurring role on American Dad for he's like DF 18 years yeah. for fun. <laughs> <laughs> the serious actor and he plays the most coked up character on that show. That that is true. He is wacky as fuck on that and like yeah. I love um if he, if if anyone who doesn't know this looks just look up Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart oh, and yeah. their and their uh their bromance is like the most beautiful thing of all time. Like I love those guys so much. Like my goal is to just go to Europe and be in a random pub and just see Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen hanging out. I'm just going to be the, the third wheel. <laughs> I'm going to pet those heads. All those right. So sultry more horror, heads. More horror news. Um, have any of y'all watched Yellow, Yellow Jackets yet? I'm going to run my beard. Yes. Head. Love it. I haven't well, watched I, it yet. Have it's, not. it's at the top of my list of things to watch. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I have even more motivation because next season has been announced. And Elijah Wood's going to be a part of it as a new character. So yeah. that's got me sold right there. I love they dropped, Elijah Wood. They dropped like a mini trailer for it. Uh -huh. And the, the, the last like scene the shot they show is Elijah Wood talking to one of the characters. Like, you're like, oh, these two together are going to be really fucked up. So I'm really excited. <laughs> Very excited for that. Um, speaking of TV shows, Friday the 13th, the series, the Crystal Lake series, 
Uh, we've gotten some news about that uh, from Brian Fuller. Uh, let's see here. They officially start writing soon. It's going to have two scores to choose from. I don't know exactly what that means. A modern one and a Harry Manfredini one, like the classic score. Ooh. Um, Kevin, Ooh, which would you choose? Oh, I gotta go with <laughs> well, Manfredini. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kevin Williamson is writing an episode. Oh, damn. And Adrian <laughs> King, who played Alice, the first final girl from Friday the 13th, part one, is going to play a reoccurring role in the series. So that's, that's cool. really cool. That's I, cool. I'm excited oh, they're bringing some of these back. I'm 100% convinced that at some point we're going to see a fucking hockey mask in that show. Like, oh, yeah. we're going to see Jason oh, in the show at some point. They're going to make it work somehow. Yeah. There's going to be a hockey rink at the camp. They're also going to be wearing <laughs> for no reason. All right, I've got one more piece of TV news that's exciting to me. I don't know if anybody else is going to be excited about it, uh, but the TV show Slasher uh, is officially getting a season five coming to Shudder uh, in April. Uh, Jason, you seem to not know what Slasher is. Have you ever heard of that one? It took me a minute. Once you said Shudder, I remember it came back to me, but it's yeah. it's one of those ones where every season's like a whole different story. Yes. Yeah, same cast, different story, or mostly the same cast. So kind of like American Horror Story or something like that. But uh, I think the first three seasons are on Netflix and then season four switches over to Shudder. It's totally worth watching, I think. Um, it's messy. It's bloody. It's uh, slashery stuff. And it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy the cast that they have and uh, the reoccurring cast members. And so to get more of this, I'm I'm down 100%. Yeah, it's been on my list. It just... It's hard to jump into a show, even if it is, you know, season one season, like, yeah. switches. Um, yeah, at least the good thing is, if you want to check it out, find, like, read the synopsis for each season and just pick the one that sounds the mm -hmm. most interesting because they don't have any continuity. So you just find whichever one is more appealing. Is there a season you'd recommend starting on? I did like the one that was on Shudder. Um, I don't remember what that was called. Uh, hang on a second. What's I the theme? Me. I, I watched one season of that, and it's where they're doing like a competition. Yeah. And it was fucking think, way more brutal than I thought it was going to be. So I think that's the one that was on Shudder. Me, Flesh Joe, and Blood. Know. Flesh and Blood was the yes. one on Shudder. Yes, you recommended that, and it's really good. Like, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's brutal. It's messy. <laughs> like, there's a lot yeah. of blood in it. I'm surprised more people. Oh, can I talk about the one thing this episode did do for me? Yeah. It made me want to cask ale. <laughs> 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 because you see when he's pumping he's in the bar he's the yeah. bar he's pumping the have you guys ever had a cask ale i don't like think so going to a bar so how they tap it is they actually tap it when they base they basically it's a wooden cask and they put a a, a dowel into it and, and hammer mm -hmm. it in and then have to pump it so what you get is less carbonation it, it's it, but it's meant for like like more english style beers like an yeah. esb or the english bitters I'm just so saying good. if you ever if you ever have a brewery near you that's doing a cask an ale on cask definitely worth checking out but they do have to hand pump it mm. and and what they'll do is they, they won't keep it on tap for more than like two days because that point it has zero yeah. combination yeah well i was just looking up to see which season i would recommend and seeing the screenshots from uh season four uh yeah you need to watch season four that's the one that's on shutter it's flesh and blood it's mm -hmm. nuts and a lot of fun but uh, i recommend all the seasons it's, it's a fun show and I'm excited for more of it. So, did you guys April. ever watch that one that came out about ten years, Harper's Island? Yes, I love that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, very good. Like again, another one that flew under the radar. Yeah, and it was only what one season, right? Or one season. Seasons? Yeah, I I actually watched that with my wife, who's not Same a here. horror person, but it's I, I I described it as it's almost like a soap opera with like bloody decapitations yes. all of a sudden in it, like. It's a fun, like, twisty, rich people all being assholes kind of soap opera. And then somebody will die at the end of, like, every episode. It's great. Big fun. Yeah, I agree. R very, very well done. And, and it was kind of cool because even back then, that was a big leap. I think I oh, think yeah. right now, horror was on, like, is definitely... like, CBS, too. Yeah. And I think right now, like, horror is definitely more in the mainstream than it has been in a long time. And I'm, and I always mean that for the better. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. we've talked about gatekeeping before. I'm always about, like, dude, like... I love seeing this stuff in the mainstream. I want more people to put eyeballs on it, but like it was pretty ballsy for CBS to put that on when they did. And yeah. I, I think if it came out nowadays, it would definitely shudder pick up season or Hulu oh, yeah, yeah. would pick up season two in a heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one one thing I was talking to my my wife about that um, I got her to watch the menu on my birthday. It's like mm. I, 
It's almost, it's like you know on the Sicilian when on your daughter's birthday, you know you can't refuse a request. On my birthday, <laughs> my wife kind of will watch. I won't pick anything too extreme, but I can get her to watch most anything. So I chose the menu because it just came to. You know, I just had the conversation of, I'll do anything on your birthday, and Jason's like, "We're watching the fucking menu." Hell yeah, <laughs> we're watching a horror movie. <laughs> Um, because it's, 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 it's gross as we could get like all of us horror movie geeks are the same way like what are you gonna do for your birthday oh fuck dude you're watching a horror movie with me <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> we're watching fucking dream warriors tonight we're watching, the <laughs> there we go. We're watching um, the beyond and she really uh, she's this she doesn't no she's not sure she liked it but she appreciated it but we were talking tonight okay. like what you would do with this like where where could you go next i'm like i want um a prequel about the people that work at the menu or work at that restaurant like the the sous chefs <laughs> like well, maybe I, I think part of that though with, with the sous chefs was like they definitely had to be part of that right because mm-hmm. they also were in the same boat of their dedicated i think it's almost a joke of their dedication and their right and i'm holding that chef on this pedestal that yeah. no one can ever can ever match like how like how do each one what's each one's journey to get to that point <laughs> It, it, you know, it's funny. My uh, my brother in law Yancey is I shouldn't have called him by his real name, um, but <laughs> um, he's a he's a general manager of a restaurant down here. He's been a chef his whole life. But his favorite thing to make at home is fucking carne asada and tortillas, or, or you yeah. know, a burger and fries. And I, I thought it was actually really, really. Um, it, I thought the movie was great. Like I love that. I don't know if I called a horror movie. Um, I, I definitely think you could because of the implication in it, but. Holy shit, was that a good movie? That's another one though that like my normie friends are all just like uh masturbating over. And I respect that because <laughs> it's so fucking good. Like, I think I think when you hit that spot that you can get the horror nerd community mm-hmm. and like the normie community to get together and agree mm-hmm. this movie's great. That's it's like a sweet spot. It's hard to hit. I've seen Megan getting some of that same kind of press too, though. Like a lot of people I haven't seen Megan yet, Me but either. I've seen a lot oh, of people okay. loving it. So so Jason, I'm in Virginia this week with nothing to do. Should I go see Megan? Oh yeah. Aside from work, I have to work weird fucking hours. I'll it's, probably get sick again. It's but. a definitely a good crowd movie. If you yeah. if you can get it with a bunch of stupid teenagers in there, it's even better. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, so someone posts on Twitter saying Megan be so much better if it was rated R. So I'm kind of excited to wonder if they did, wonder if like what the what a different cut would be. But the, uh, I was watching the New Blood against uh, and then um, Friday Thirteenth Part Seven, the New Blood. Mm-hmm. On the the Scream Factory box set, shout out to Scream Factory because what a beautiful box! Oh set. man, it looks amazing, the, the, dude. The transfer is so good, and I love it when you can still tell it's like this grainy film. Mm-hmm. It looks fucking gorgeous. But they did. Um, you can watch the the deleted scenes from a work print, and like the the extra gore is so good. Yeah, I think I've actually heard somewhere that uh, there is a like R-rated version of Megan that exists that will probably be on Blu-ray when they yeah. release that. Yeah, I'm wondering yeah, that's they, why they, I wait for at this point. Yeah, they definitely said it was originally meant to be a, a pure R-rated mm-hmm. movie, and they shot some of the scenes. Not probably not as much as was in the original script, right? Um, but I, I don't as as opposed to a movie like The Meg, which I was really disappointed wasn't R-rated because that's the whole point. You want to see a fucking shark fighting yeah. and you know tearing people apart. But this movie, like, it's so much more than just you know, killer robot. Sure, it's it's there's a lot more going on than just that. So I'm actually okay in the camp. I'm okay. It doesn't need to be that's R-rated. Right. Oh yeah, like, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't mind a PG-13. Like that's that's not an instant kill for me. But uh, well, I mean, you know, I think nowadays we're a little bit jaded. But you know, fucking Poltergeist, which in my opinion is one of the, one of the scariest movies ever made, is PG-13. Well, the, right. was that before or after PG thirteen? No, that was a movie that I, th- I think actually created yeah. PG thirteen. Yeah, that it was because they were like, "This isn't Rain Temple of Doom. This can't be PG." Gremlins, <laughs> Gremlins, yeah, Gre- Gremlins is a, is a good one too. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with PG or PG thirteen horror, um, but I do think sometimes they'll like that rated R cut is kind of the sweet spot. Yeah, I, I think the the only time I mind a PG thirteen is when you can tell it was made to be rated R and chopped up, like mm-hmm. not with what they're doing with Megan, because you said that they, I, I know the TikTokers got a hold of it when they saw the dance scene and like kids got interested in it. That's so smart, though. That's PG-13. business, right? Yeah, no, that's good, good business. But then they just actually shot it as a PG thirteen. But like I mentioned, the Black Christmas remake a minute ago, mm-hmm. and that was shot as an R rated movie. And then they cut all the kills to make it PG thirteen, and it felt real super fast. obvious to me, like a cutaway kind of thing. I get like it, it bothered me. Was that the two thousand nine remake 
or no, the, that was no, the 2019. The one. I think it was 2019. Um, or did they when they released that on Blu-ray or whatever on home video? Did they home video? I don't know. <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering. Maybe did you go to the... Suncoast to pick up your copy, <laughs> <laughs> dude? Suncoast back in the day, man, they had like that hard to find. I remember mm-hmm. buying the video. De- Actually, I think half the VHSs I shipped Jody were all bought from Suncoast Video back in yeah. the day when they actually had those videos, those VHSs you could just find. Yeah. Damn. All right, Jody. Any more horror news? No, nope, that's all I got. All right, we're running a little late, but um, what we got for data device? We started running late, but we're like, just I know we started <laughs> early. Of, so. We're we started early. We're usually, I'm only an hour <laughs> in. Um, you know, what we didn't talk about New Year's resolutions. Oh, okay. We can go with that if we want. <laughs> I don't make resolutions. Yeah, I'm kind of anti. Not anti, but. I don't like making big proclamations because I think it's mo- it's more about smaller. I, I would rather yeah. see. I, 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 tend, I tend to use the beginning of the year as a good time to do some small things that maybe can lead to more down the line. You know? Yeah. I'm the like same I, way you guys are. Yeah. yeah I did. Uh, I'm doing dry January right now. Not because I feel like I have a problem, but just I wanted to take Hold a on. break. And What are you drinking then? <laughs> I have athletic brewing. Oh, uh, damn. Okay. Their ESB and their uh, above the moon, which is a like barrel aged stout kind of thing. Mm-hmm. No alcohol. I'm I'm completely sober right now. It, it, oh. ESB is my favorite styles in the world. Mm-hmm. Which, it's a pretty it, decent it's, ESB. It's, like I'm what's not ESB? Say, it's Extra special bitters. And it's funny. It's not even bitter. It's no, more it's not of bitter. a realistic good ESB tastes like toast. Yeah, and they mean the Malty. best way possible. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, very I, hard style to make. Yeah. But I've, you know, I've, I've taken the month off just to kind of reevaluate, you know, my relationship with it and not feel like I need to all the time. But I'm going on a trip to Chicago this week, so I may end up breaking it before the week's over. But, well, uh, you know, just doing some small incremental things that I can look at and go, eh, this is good for me. This is a good thing for me to do for myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe it leads to something else down the line or maybe it just... Uh, ends up being a month where i think through things a little bit differently i mean i'm still eating gummies like I'm not... I, was say, I was about to ask <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm you know dry dry does not exclude anything that's been dried cured and trimmed so I mean, you, it still counts do you find it funny that people like look down on other people like oh that person ingest thc while they're on their eighth glass of wine where they fucking yeah. pick their kids up from oh, soccer yeah. no it's definitely weird <laughs> yeah it is definitely weird like i like, do like it's all just mind altering substances but and, and but again i'm not saying one way is better than the other oh, yeah. i'm just saying though like it's like, personal preference yeah don't, don't look someone drinking when you're don't look down on someone who's fucking doing gummies when you're drinking three bottles of wine a day like yeah and, and here's the thing you can take a gummy and one gummy and you're fine the whole night no in, yep. <laughs> what Not no me. i'm saying like or if it's too much you just you fucking fall you, you just fall asleep and you, you wake watch up cartoons. you might be a little you, you walk you up watch cartoons for a while and go to bed yeah but you have a baby that that needs you for life well no well okay i'm just saying in the vacuum i know what you mean dude. but yeah. as opposed to if i drink too much alcohol you know you might puke you're gonna feel like crap for like two or three days two or three days like how much are you drinking jason Wait, have you hit 40 yet mondo yeah uh, <laughs> oh i forgot I'm the, I'm, I'm the youngin on this show you, you cross that line and it's it's a couple of days I, i'm just saying you know you drink <laughs> you you drink too much alcohol you're gonna feel it for a while it's gonna have yeah. much worse effect than you take too many gummies and you fall asleep and eat like a whole thing of pie <laughs> that's my dad advice what kind of pie <laughs> your dad advice is take gummies <laughs> Cause no, like I'm, I'll, I'll just say like I, I got new ones. And I didn't realize that like one was equal like three servings, mm-hmm. and I took the whole one. And my wife was like freaking out because it was like equal to like three of the ones that we normally take. Yeah, and you just take like one or two, and you know, yeah, I Did definitely got too breakfast? high, but then I just fell asleep. Well, see, the, the difference for me is if 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 I was podcast or if I was podcasting while I'm podcasting. <laughs> If, if I was, I'm, I'm just imagining all this like, right now. This, this, Jody's like, wait, we've been recording this. Like, Dreams in the have, podcast we have house a website. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, <laughs> if I was having a drink right now, I would be a you know entertaining, like more exciting podcaster. 
if I had a gummy right now, I would have forgotten what I was talking about about 80 times and just looked at the microphone because I I get very forgetful and I don't do things. Uh, so, yes, uh, like I on our lost... Exactly. Um, I like to think I'm forgetful and entertaining. <laughs> like on our lost chopping mall watch along that will never post because like, this is too much. <laughs> when we started revealing our net worth, like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I, I listened back to that. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm not actually going to put this out. <laughs> Well, I didn't realize I how hard it would be. I can't put a seven minute podcast. <laughs> it's hard enough to watch a movie and have like a conversation mm-hmm. with people in ongoing conversation. That's hard enough, like stone, silver, whatever you want to call it. But you add in some substances and man, that was really challenging. But we still got to do it again, though, because it's fun as a live thing to do with our with our Patreons or our followers. And uh, it was, I, I, we saw a blast. I think it was fun. We had a blast. But we, we got to do blood sucking freaks yeah then we have two blood sucking freaks um <laughs> jody oh never mind can we, can we announce dates for chattanooga film festival or are those still no, low key? no that's still hush hush uh we we can't say anything yet uh but i'm just know i'm excited chattanooga film festival is my favorite and yeah we're we, gonna be in person partly this year we so. gotta talk about that i'm definitely coming out for that i'm gonna make it happen yeah um and we have a lot of people a lot of friends want to make that happen too so We'll get the big Airbnb. We'll do some face masks and watch some blood sucking freaks and do a, <laughs> a chat along. Jason, you should come out too, dude. Yeah, if, if, if you never tell me when there's it no is. snakes, we we've gotten all the snakes out of Tennessee. It's a, it's fine now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> we moved them all out. They're, they're um, Jody's oh. a pipe fucking pipe. Uh, the pipe pipe, pipe piper's rat, right? Piper. Is a uh, St. Yeah. Patrick was the uh, was yeah. the uh, St. Patrick guy. chasing all the snakes out. There, well, what's funny is um, uh, my... except for except for trouser snake, we have all the trouser snakes. Need like a slide whistle noise. Jason, <laughs> does this trouser snakes scare you too, or is it just venomous? <laughs> so my eight-year-old has like this big fear of zombies. He right, plays right, 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 Minecraft. Like, Jason has the best ability to just move on. Like yeah. I love his ability to just move on. Well, so sometimes gonna, yes, we got talk about that. We'll just we'll, we'll talk about trouser snakes off air. There you go. So basically, he has this fear of snakes, and I've convinced that snakes, zombies, and I've convinced him that there is a device on our roof that disperses zombie repellent <laughs> so they will not attack our house specifically i love this so much i told Wait, hold Jason, on. like if i live near him i just want to dress up as a zombie and like watch his yard and be like ah, like i can't like, <laughs> force Wait, field on his yard no here's, here's how far i've taken this i told them that in order to disperse the zombie repellent you have to press a button on my phone <laughs> so every night when he goes to bed he comes up to me and says zombie repellent and I have to bring up my the app that connects to my washing machine. <laughs> he presses because it's shaped like a home. It's like your home automation yeah, yeah. app. So he has to press the button on there, and then he'll ask me um, how far away are the zombies. So I'll do a um, internet speed test, <laughs> and I'll use the numbers to tell him how many miles. <laughs> it's one of those. And this is a parenting thing. It's like. Do you are you am I reinforcing his fear or am I easing it? Am I reinforcing it by buying into the construct of the idea, or am I easing it by giving him a way to? Here, here, here's yeah. a legit think is that at some level he knows you're bullshitting him, but mm-hmm. it's fun and he wants to have fun with his dad, and that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's the ritual of it. And less yeah. twenty years from now, he's laying in, he's he's laying on a therapist bed, going like, <laughs> "Fuck." I don't think zombie repellent exists. <laughs> <laughs> well, he keeps asking to go on the roof and see. <laughs> no, man. I, I think, like, uh, uh, let's be honest, right? A lot of us, when we were young, we kind of got smartened up pretty young. We just kind of figured out, like, there's there's no way a, 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 a obese man in a red suit can hit all these houses in one night. <laughs> but we still won't. We, we believe at some point for the fun of the belief. Yeah. And I, I think like as much as we kind of joke about how we do things for our kids, I think our kids do things to their parents too. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and try to think like, Oh, dad's having fun with this. I'm going to have fun with it too. So I don't think, I think Jason, I think you're being a good dad is what I think you're doing. I'm just trying to go to sleep. <laughs> One <day or another. laughs> Jason, I'm going to fucking sleep. <laughs> when, when you, when you see Jason, ha- Amazon order of like 32 ounces of chloroform. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> he's just he's just so tired. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, dude, I, I think that's actually a really cool thing, man. Like, it's uh, dude, as, as long as your kid's into it, like, as your kid's into it and you're having a good time, like, why stop? So, so our dad advice is uh, tonight: <laughs> gaslight your children. That's it. <laughs> gaslight, take, gaslight take gummies <laughs> and uh, trick your trick trick your kids when you need trick to. Trick your shit. But... <laughs> yeah, I'd say apparently that's, that's, that's going to be now. Trick or shit. What's going to happen? Like either you're going to give me candy or going to shit your doorstep. <laughs> I'm getting mumble mouth without any alcohol. So Dang, yeah. there we go. Yeah, you got that All right. nine working, huh? Does that wrap everything up? We got we got, we got anything else to go for our chest? Yeah, I think it's, we're good. Yeah, All right. A nice, nice bow on everything. <laughs> well, next week we will be reviewing Cabinet of Curiosities episode seven. And I didn't write down the name, so it's gonna be a surprise. So let's see anyone knows off the everyone. <laughs> We appreciate everyone for listening. We appreciate it if you would give us a rating review on iTunes or rating on Spotify. And hey, check out that wacky um, fish reel uh, set to Primus that's gotten 1.2 million views. Did we you put tag on. the original artist of that? Um, I'll have to check. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I didn't tag. Oh, no. Oh, oh I, I did just look real quick. The next episode is The Viewing. The viewing, yeah. okay. And that's Directed by Cosmatos. Panos Cosmatos. Oh, I love it. I'm excited. Okay. I'm very excited for this Let's one. Let's do this. All right. And with that, we thank you for listening to Dads from the Crypt. Go Niners. <laughs> Follow Dads from the Crypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or I will follow you to the grave. <laughs> no, seriously, you really should watch. But be careful what you ask for. You may get it. <laughs>